So uh, now comes the technique part of the of the poem talk. Thank you very much for uh, for having the chance to give um, uh, uh, an idea about our technique, the tripartite flap uh, configuration for correction of complex clasped thumb. And uh, this flap is designed to treat these patients with um, um, clasped thumb with complete um, um, inability to grasp small objects, like uh, as you see in this patient with deformed thumb, um, unstable uh, MCP joint with um, very much narrow narrowing and deficiency of um, uh, the web space between the thumb and index. The narrow web space and palmar contracture is uh, very apparent uh, in this patient. And um, the two planes uh, tightness needs chimeric design to move each part of the flap to different directions. And we designed a tripartite flap to open the contracture between the first and, um, and second metacarpal, as well as release the bulmar contracture. And here uh, you see a diagram of the soft tissue realignment of the index flap, palmar flap, and dorsal flap. This is the original uh, design of our uh, technique. And um, we draw the index flap and then adding a dorsal flap from the base of the index and then the palmar flap for uh, the final con um, uh, configuration of the tripartite part of uh, this design. As you see here, we mobilize the index flap and the dorsal triangular flaps, then make a release in on the base of the thumb and release the palmar quadrangular flap to be set to the dorsal incision after rotating the dorsal triangular flap. Releasing the palmar flap is uh, should be very cautious to protect the neurovascular bundle to the radial side of the index finger. And then um, advancing the palmar triangle uh, for final closure. Sometimes releasing the palmar contracture of the thumb needs protection of the neurovascular bundle of the thumb as well. We usually do x-rays for the proper selection of the, of the timing for surgery because we shifted to arthrodesis rather than chondrodesis. And here is you see the exploration of the MCP joint after the proper release of the fascia covering the muscles, sometimes releasing part of the muscles, releasing the, um, the uh, first metacarpal head of the do first dorsal interosseus, or uh, releasing the transverse or oblique part of the adductor polishes. Then we explore the head, making the shortening of the MCP joint through the, the, um, the metacarpal part of the joint, but taking a very thin layer from the base of the thumb, not to injure the, the uh, ossific center at the base of the proximal phalanx. And as we reach the, the first layer of the bleeding surface of the ossific center, we stop to preserve the growth of the thumb. And finally, we fix the construct before closure of the we fix the construct before closure of the um, um, uh, of the skin flaps to um, in a maximum thumb abduction and the maximum thumb abduction uh, abduction. Um, uh, we prefer to do it on palmar direction rather than thumb extension. And here you see the final part um, suturing the, 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 the three parts of the flap to its released uh, spaces. And you see here the, the final result. This is what it was. And and uh, the final alignment of the skin. And you can see here the, the stable MCP joint. And 
the independent motion of the thumb muscles and how she grasps the, the small objects. and how she grasps small objects uh, after releasing off the thumb and the squat space. A second example of two years old, uh, um, a six month uh, old boy, um, severe palmar contracture and narrow web space, releasing the, the, um, um, the first web space and the palmar contracture the similar way, but in this, uh, um, uh, patients specifically, we had extra skin at the base of the index finger that we took it as a graft and put it in the web space to maintain the, the round, wide uh, web design. A three, a second example of this three-year-old boy and a fourth exa example of uh, an older one in which we needed um, FPL lengthening to um, to reach the final um, uh, full width of the of the thumb release, and this is a long term follow up of these uh, patients at one year with maintained follow up, and um, I'm happy that this flap was uh, reproducible with my colleagues. Uh, Dan Zlotlu sent me this uh, uh, mail six months after trying this flap, and he called it uh, Cairo flap, and then sent me that uh, after several years, it still works. And here comes, uh, why are we designing this flap and not using the, uh, the index flap? Because uh, we tried the index flap and many occasions we needed release incisions to achieve the full um, uh, width of the, of the flap and uh, leaving the release incisions or grafting it. But we think it's insufficient uh, releasing the palmar contracture as well as the web space. It, it should be used for only one indication. And harvesting a narrow index flap will lead to straight line crossing the web space as you see here. And at this time, trans um, uh, transforming it to tripartite flap will, will help you achieve the, the, the best correction. Finally, how to choose between the tripartite and the honey flap? We use both the flaps for severe clasp the thumb when four flap Z plus T or index flap are insufficient to maintain the, the width. However, in clasped thumb with loss of index skin pliability or severely deviated and deformed index, like in some cases with distal artery ribosis, the, uh, also uh, when there is um, um, a thumb index um, interphalangeal syndactly in other pathologies, the indication uh, for any flap is very clear. In this um, um, uh, part of the talk of Scott Codzin, he, um, he designed the hierarchy for the first web uh, space correction, the four flaps, E plus T, then stiletto flap, then galley flap, then other pedicled and um, uh, uh, free flaps. We want to introduce the tripartite flap um, if you feel that stiletto flap is insufficient and uh, you can use it and you can transform the tripartite into that you can transform the the stiletto into a tripartite flap and here is um, some memories um, with uh, scott codes and uh, dan zolotlu uh, hisham abdul ghani and uh, soldado and other friends amr muhammad abdul wahid and ibrahim Moss. thank you very much and these are uh, uh, the data provided for further reading Thank you, Mustafa. Thank you. Thank you. It's a nice presentation. Uh, Soldado was asking, uh, how are you, uh, our results compared with just stiletto flap, organic flap? And I think you answered. Uh, Soldado, if you have any 
question or cl clarification, you may go directly to the mic. Sorry, I, I wrote the question before he explained <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. so what was what's the question? Um, um, Hisham, what's the question? How are the results compared with just street of flap, organic flap? You ask this, but uh, I think yes, he, but, but then you, you ask me something. You ask me, but then you ask me something else, no? No, no, no. Just okay. Uh, sorry. There won't be any further sorry, sorry. 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 Yeah, so, um, can I ask a question? How do you yeah, uh, classify the severity of the first web uh, contracture? We, we talked in the last POM talk about this, but because th there were no uh, severity classifications in the literature. And I proposed something in a, in, in a paper uh, talking about the first intimate carpal flap. So how do you classify classify the severity? I think the, the classification of the severity is dependent on... Um, 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 we need to differentiate if there is um, a thumb index narrowing at the level of the metacarpals, or there is also a syndactyly between the phalanges and the... And the uh, the phalanges of the thumb and and the the index finger because um, I think they are two major um, uh, uh, entities. If the 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 web space is is here or here or here, and parallelism between the the uh, the first and second metacarpal indicates the uh, the severe form of the narrow web, I cannot uh, consider. Syndactly between the thumb and index uh, is an air web. It's something uh, something uh, else. It needs to be differentiated uh, separately. So, um, uh, if there is syndactly between both, this is an, an absolute indication for me for any flap. And I never needed any either pedicle flap or distant flap. Or free flap for 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 these uh, cases, regardless of the diagnosis uh, of the congenital hand anomaly. However, if the narrowing is uh, even the severe form, parallel first and second metacarpal, with no syndactyly between the thumb and an index, this is an indication for the tripartite or organic flap. You can use uh, them both, uh, but in this condition, a four flap Z plus T or just a stiletto flap is um, is not sufficient. Uh, there is a question: Do you. Uh, you use any tendon transfer or just chondrodesis of the MCB joint to manage clasp of thumb? Um, we usually chondrodes, but uh, we moved from chondrodesis to arthrodesis. Uh, long years ago, because um, uh, we found uh, um, the results of uh, arthrodesis much better, so we try to shift the the age of surgery from younger age to more than two years. Um, we don't do um, uh, usually we we use this flap for severe uh, clasp thumb that usually have uh, a very unstable MCP. So. We repair, we didn't try the ligament reconstruction or application. We just um, do something for the joint. Transferring a tendon to, to increase the, the IP extent, extensor at the same time is, um, is not our usual practice. If, uh, if, um, if we do the release and at later age, the, the patient needs a transfer, we do it for some patients, but uh, but not simultaneous. But sometimes we do plication of the extensor tendon at the same time if we observed a severe contracture of uh, the IP at the time uh, at the time of surgery or before surgery. Uh, there is a question from the Professor Sherko. Uh, he's greeting you for uh, this flap, but uh, he have uh, some. Uh, necrosis at the tip of the flaps. 
uh, and he's asking you, what do you do in this case? Um, taking a, a triangular flap is um, uh, is the best way to to get a random pattern flap because you don't you are not um, uh, obeying the you're not stuck to the rule of two to one. You you usually take it three to one, sometimes more. And if you take it very thin at the tip, um, you might have necrosis. So we we, we would rather repair the the base first and take make the tip tension free uh, to avoid any flat necrosis so the, this is my first advice the second advice is to use not depend on, only on the index flap uh, just take the index with the with the two parts of the triper tight because they release tension across the 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 web space allowing the tip of the index flap to cover the volar aspect of the thumb as much as possible without tension. So the main value of the other flaps uh, helping the index flap is um, decrease the tension across your your main flap to 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 straighten the thumb outside the the flexed posture. Okay. Can I can I? Uh just reinforce what you just said, Mustafa. I think there's a lot of wisdom in everything you just said. Um, the, yeah, and I, and I see this a lot. I see a lot of tip necrosis in, um, in stiletto flaps that are done by other people. I've never, to this day, knock on wood, right, had tip necrosis on a stiletto flap. And I think the reasons are exactly what you said. I think you really need to have a full thickness um, and I go down to basically the fascia. All the fat comes up with the flap. Um, I try to avoid, obviously, the dorsal sensory branch of the finger. Um, but I stay just above that branch. And um, and I think the tensionless, you, you don't want to pull the, pull the crap out of this thing. You want to have it inset nicely. And I think that makes the difference, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think there's a lot in how you do it, but I, I love I love your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think we reached the end. Uh, <laughs> thank you uh, very much for all the attendance, for the, all the organizers, for all the moderators, uh, Soldado, Andrea, Dan, Mustafa, and uh, see you again in further meeting in the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.